Good old weekend, the Invitational of the Rogue. Good old weekend. Solid watch. <laughs> Don't be alarmed if I look a little bit different today, team. I just fancy the change. Also, Pam10 Pro V has sponsored this video. No, they haven't. Of course. New formula L'Oreal El Ney. Because I'm worth it. Because you're worth it. You probably all know the results of the Rogue Invitational. I'll tell you them in this video. But uh, this video is more of just like um, my thoughts and a bit of behind the scenes stuff that you may have missed. So sit back, relax, smash that like button and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No matter how old you get or how good you get at CrossFit, you're never gonna not laugh at a at a fart. I mean, you can imagine the smell. Also, over the weekend, there was another bit of changing room antics, of which I thoroughly enjoyed. Guy Malieros did one over on Velner. Thoroughly appreciated it. Velner, Velner, cross your fingers. What? Cross your fingers. No, like both hands, both hands. Cross your fingers, put it down. Now look at your foot. Oh. Backwards. Yeah! <laughs> Let's talk about Guy for a minute. Obviously he came up through the teens and I really feel like this past year, especially at the CrossFit Games, he kind of came into his own. And then coming into Rogue, he did what we all expected him to do. In the Bella Complex, he put up a huge lift of 357 pounds, 162 kilos as his first lift. And he moved so fast, it was almost like he was losing control. And then his second lift, 367 pounds, 166 kilos. I'm so strong. If you want to see really where the strength lies is watch his legs on the squat. There's barely any movement, any caving in of the knees whatsoever. And there's the, there's the strength part. Hey, let's get it. Further to my name as far as I came, hey. Dying a legend to feed in a grave, y'all in my lane. Wasn't the cleanest. Was good enough that he meant he could pass on the third lift. What was his reasoning for passing on the lift? I was always watch my my friends passing the year like in the third sem uh, trimester. And I was like, how it feels like to pass in the already in the third, like before the year finished. So I, d I just like feel how it is like in the second lift. So it was very nice, it's been awesome to be. Yep, he just kind of wanted to know what it felt like to be finished before the event was actually finished. That's what he said. Fair play. You're that strong and you can do that. I'm all for it. Also with Guy, we saw fireworks in event seven. Fun event to watch that one. He took the win over Sam Quant by two tenths of a second. Third one at about the same time, and Ayers trips over the barbell. They both have been the night great, it's some burning down all these cages and he he did it solo, so these labels to better pay us on the shit. I love this guy so much. <laughs> and my talking point around all this is that he's only 21 years old and we're already expecting him at events to win the big lift events and the power output, the speed events. He won him at the games and he won him at Rogue. Obviously he's partnered up with Froning and he's moved into the mayhem environment in Cookville. And it's gonna be interesting to see how he changes as an athlete over the next couple of years. He already is top level at certain parts of CrossFit, but obviously as we know with this sport, you have to be all rounded. If we see over the next two, three, four, years him bring up his engine and his gymnastics to a point that we expect with his lifting he's gonna be unstoppable and that's pretty exciting ladies and gentlemen we got him that right there is uh Lazadukic, also competing this weekend at the rogue invitational but this weekend was also his birthday and a couple of the guys got him a cake and a load of little cakes and the decorations spot on i wanna be you gotta win every event at the Rogue Invitational and the CrossFit Games, become fittest on earth, walk away with hundreds of thousands of dollars. Or just catch them all. Now let's quickly talk about the legends. We're not gonna get served. Why? It says due to our limited menu, we're not serving legends. <gasps> Team, if you go to McDonald's, you're not gonna get served. But not you legends, the legends on the competition floor. Nostalgia, that's what it is. You know when you're watching the events, you're like, this is cool. And what I thought this time round was super cool is that they paired them up. You see some of your favorite superheroes working together, I thoroughly appreciate it. What I also thoroughly appreciate is an awkward high five moment. And Rich Froning gave us one of those. Also, I want to take a moment of this video to notice that Dan Bailey is still like the Michelin man. Those traps should have their own postcode. And I've heard in winter, there's snow on the top of them. What is that? You are just ginormous.
The strongman competition. Over the weekend, it was. <laughs> I enjoyed watching the strong, the big, the very, very big people. There's like humans, and then there's like very big humans. First off, I want to get something clear. 100% strong men use more chalk than crossfitters, and that is a hard thing to do, but they have managed it. JF Carone absolutely blew my mind with the deadlift. He made 926 pounds just look easy. That's 420 kilos. And he said he was ready for an over 1,000 pound pull. He won the deadlift in two lifts. Didn't have to take his third attempt. And then I've never been on OnlyFans, but I feel like this is the strongman edition of OnlyFans. First on the screen right now is Kieliskowski. In the yoke and log event, usually strong men do the clean, get it to their shoulders, and then either jerk the log or push the log. This guy almost power snatched it. It was incredible to watch. Look at that, just pure strength. That's 163 kilos, 360 pounds. He's just chucking up like it's nothing. But for me, the most exciting part of the strongman competition over the weekend was the stones at the end. Martin Lisi's went into the stone event having to place higher than Carone, who'd set the second fastest time in order for him to place higher than Tom Stoltman. And what did he do? He absolutely blasted the stones. And his celebration was pure power. The invitational champion. He saves the best for last. The dragon rolls 24 <laughs> Crazy. Overall, Martin Lisi's took the win for the strongman, walking away with $133,685. And what did he do the day after? He became the real life Thor, pulling a hammer off the ground weighing 300 pounds for a world record. That's what you do after a comp, eh? Go in the next day and max out something else. Anyway, back to the CrossFit. In some bite-sized news, Jacqueline Dahlstrom showed us what her fingers look like after the first event, the weighted rope climb event. That's pretty gross. <laughs> that would have been painful for the rest of the weekend, I'm sure. Two, if you missed it, Brent Fikowski on Instagram went live every day when the event was on. Uh, I just couldn't stop looking at his mustache. That is a Movember going really strong. Three, Velna shared this, so I thought I would share it too. Can you spot the difference in the photos? Four, during Jeffrey Adler's lift, when he went through the whole lift and had his final jerk, I just couldn't stop looking at Travis Mayer. It's the face of like, oh, ah, oh, you got it? Yeah, give him a clap. And in another bit of lifting news, did you see Emma McQuaid's face after she hit a final jerk? She knew it was terrible, but uh, she enjoyed it. You know, sometimes it's that bad that it's good that you're laughing at it. And you know what? During the lift, Emma Carey kind of blew me away. You have to remember that she's only 17 years old and she moves so well. Putting up an impressive 237 pounds in the lift. It's over 100 kilos for this complex. 17. And moving well, it's just... It's going to be exciting to see her progress during the sport as she grows up. And after day one, Hayley Adams made this little girl's birthday. She made Hayley a banner and Hayley actually went and met her and told her happy birthday after the event. Hit me right in the feels. And how much do you like Matt Fraser? This guy, quite clearly a lot. Fraser signed his chest on day one and by day two, he'd tattooed that signature and it's there for life. Now let's just talk about the leaderboard over the weekend. On the male side, it was pretty consistent, especially with the top two, Justin Medeiros always leading, Pat Vellner just behind for the first two days, and then Justin Medeiros extending his lead on the third day. Pat Vellner actually shared something on Instagram, reflecting on Justin Medeiros' performance. And I'm like, this mother <laughs> don't miss. No, he's <laughs> good. That mother <laughs> don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. I think what we're seeing with Justin Medeiros over these last couple of years is just his consistency coming through. He didn't finish any lower than fifth in all of the seven events over the weekend with a stacked field of males. And because of that, he walked away with $255,213 for taking first place. And you know, you can see the passion the guy has for the sport. I just, it's so good. Also, the mullets got to meet. He got to meet Shane over the weekend and he was proud of, you know, of Shane sticking to his word. A little bit of a different story for Tira over the weekend. Leading after day one, but then after day two, she was 15 points behind Annie Thorostotter. If you've ever met Tia or you've seen Tia, she's not the biggest athlete in stature. She struggles on the echo bike. And that event there for her was a, was a, a rough one. But doing what Tia does best, she came into day three with a lot of fire. Is gonna win event seven. And she is your three-time Rogue Invitational Champion. Let's go! And over the two events, she took a second and a first to finish 65 points ahead of Annie. You know, after day two, I was, I was thinking there was going to be some headlines, you know, people saying she's passed it or she's slipping. Hey, Dave. You know what's crazy is Tia's come off the back of the CrossFit Games where she peaked for it. 
Then she's gone into bobsled, obviously looking towards the Winter Olympics. She's not fully focused on training, and it is kind of the off season. And after day two, you may have had some questions, but after day three, you just look at her and go, nope, this typical Tia Claire Toomey, always dominant, always there to fight, can never bet against her. Yep. And then in some breaking news that just came out today, Katrin Davis' daughter announced that she's now not being coached by Ben Bergeron and Comp Train, and she's going to be trained by Annie Thorisdotter's, Bjorn Carl Gummensen's, and Henrik Hapalainen's coach, Yami Tikkanen. I don't know how you say that second name. This comes after her worst games finish, a 10th this year, and her rogue performance wasn't her greatest. It's an interesting one. Ben Bergeron obviously coached Brooke Wells, she moved to Proven. Two weeks ago, coach Harry Pally, who coached Amanda Barnhart and Sam Quant, stepped down. But Comp Train still do coach Sam Quant, Amanda Barnhart, and Chandler Smith. As we said in the news the other week, Annie and Katrin have launched their headphone brand. Katrin is initially from Iceland, maybe she just wants to go home. You know, she's been living away from her family since 2015, since she joined Ben Bergeron training there. And hey, sometimes a bit of change is never a bad thing. It's gonna be interesting to see how she comes on in this next season. Annie coming back after her baby, she's crushed it. Third at the games, gave up a good fight this weekend and finished second at Rogue. But yeah, overall I thought it was a great weekend, great competition, there was a few spills, trips, it was the last time that we'd see Carrie Pierce out on the competitive floor, obviously this was her last event, so now she's officially retired, but you never know, we may see her back. Event 6, we all know where the jerry can strength came from, and I'm yet to find out why Justin Medeiros had that bandage on his left arm whilst doing the cleaning jerk. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Team, if you have enjoyed this video, as always, please do smash that like button, it really does help the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here, and if you know you have enjoyed it, do let us know down in the comments below, putting a really nice comment. No one's told you today you're an absolute legend, and we'll catch you in the next one. Good job to everyone that competed. It's a great show. Great job to Rogue, putting on a great broadcast.